Hello there. Hello. Oh my God. I'm so not used to this. Okay. All is well. All is well. Uh, hello. This is Top Talk 2. So we're meeting today live for 15, 20 minutes maximum to answer all of your questions. Uh, not all of your questions. I picked five questions today so six six questions so let's go through them i'm going to start right away question number one hello what what are your tips on building a habit and being consistent what are your tips on building a habit and being consistent what a question i could talk for hours about habits i very enjoy this topic talking about it reading about it so i brought one book i read some time ago it's james clear atomic habits this book gives you plenty of practical advice on habits so i think this is a strong recommendation there are other books so explore the topic because this topic has been researched um, and there are answers, you know, you don't have to uh, try everything for yourself. You can follow the rules because there are no mysteries anymore, you know. So there are many small things I could recommend here. Habit tracker or I don't know, planning the day, uh, planning your English learning. If we speak about learning a language where you're going to do this or what time, uh, what exactly, so plan it ahead. But this is not the key element. So today I'd like to tell you about this keystones, keystone habits, uh, habits which take care of other habits. Let's say if you um, learn this one big keystone umbrella habit, let's say, then you'll manage the small habits later on without much uh, problem. So this, I have two on my mind now. The first one is being aware. I know how it sounds. I know you think it's not practical enough, but listen, 95% um, research says 95% of our everyday actions, we perform them automatically we don't think about them at all so we repeat the same things every day we copy our thoughts we copy our behavior emotions and we perform the same mistakes let's be honest every day so what you have to do the the first step to get rid of this is being aware if you just stop for a minute you have to practice this because it's a it's something you have to practice it's not easy and it i'm afraid this keystone habit never becomes easy you have to be aware of what you're doing and why you're doing this now why are you scrolling um why are you scrolling why are you doing this at the moment um so being aware is this uh, habit that will really improve your life on many levels and it will help you um, uh, build other smaller habits. Be aware of what you're doing and why you're doing this. Um, if we, every day we think the same thoughts, did you know that? Every day we think about 90%. 90% of our daily thoughts are the same thoughts you, you were thinking yesterday. So if you think the same thoughts, you have the same emotions, you have the same feelings and you make the same decisions, uh, it causes you to experience the same uh, events and you end up, again, feeling the same emotions and thinking the same thoughts. And on and on it goes. It's a vicious circle. So to get out of the circle, you have to stop yourself. Oh, this is something I just grabbed. And be aware of what you're doing and why you're doing this and what were you supposed to be doing. So this is keystone habit. And the second one, the second keystone habit, and I talk about this habit in detail in episode 137, um, is being consistent. Like, yeah, the question was how to be consistent, being consistent. Just 
um, have this habit of coming back to the action, to the target action, let's say, you want to be performing for good. You, have to, you want to have it automated. So if you see that you broke the chain and you stopped performing this action one day, come back immediately. I'm going to say that if you stop doing, um, performing this habit two days in a row, um, you know that it's going to be harder and harder to come back. So better, don't, don't do this. Don't fall <laughs> for this trap. You have to come back. One day break, come back, do it, perform it. And it can be minimum. It can be minimal. It can be tiny. It can be just a fraction of this target habit, but do something. I can give you my example of me playing the violin. So it happens that during the day, I don't find time to play the violin. The teacher comes on Monday, he touches the instrument, he tunes the instrument, and he already knows. You haven't been practicing. So, not to be in this situation, not to feel uh, embarrassed like that, uh, I practice daily and I am extremely consistent. But if it's 10 p.m. and I have not practiced for the whole day, what I do I take this violin at 10 p.m. or even later. I open the case, I pull out the bow, prepare the bow for the, tr for, the, um, for the practice. I take out the violin. I attach this little thing that goes on your shoulder and I play the scale that is like eight sounds, eight sounds, eight sounds and backwards and I put everything away, tick. It's done, that's it, this is enough, really. Believe me, this is enough. This is how I um, incorporated most of my habits. Uh, like doing yoga every day. I cannot imagine a day without yoga now. But how did it start? Just rolling out your mat. S yes, that's stupid. Yeah, did I feel stupid? I did. It felt extremely stupid, but didn't matter. I rolled out the mat, I performed one, two shapes, asanas, and that's it. Roll the mat and go, go with the day, go on with the day. So that's what I did and uh, you, you start to see the benefits. You start to, I don't know, adapting this as a habit and you just do more of it, more of it, more of it. I don't know exactly how it works, but it works. I don't need to understand this. It's enough for me if it works and I know it. I have no idea what is the time now. <laughs> Maybe I can check it here. Oh, yes, I can. Oh my gosh, I'm talking too long. Let's move on. Second question. Do you have any standard plan for a day? Working, learning, or it depends? Thank you for this question. Yes, it depends uh, on the fact if... It depends on whether my son goes to kindergarten or not, uh, whether um, it's weekend or not, obviously. And I don't work on Fridays, for instance, so my plan differs and it's adapted uh, daily. But generally, I have two up to three classes in the morning, then I work on my podcast and I work on preparing my lessons because this takes up lots of time. I prepare homework for my students. Uh, I record audio for them. Uh, and then I have a little break for uh, a walk. Uh, this is, it's already also a habit. This also became a habit because at first uh, I went out for 10 minutes and now I'm walking for 40 minutes. So at first I just pushed myself to go out for the minimal amount of time just to be able to tick it on my habit tracker, right? Because you have to, you have to walk, right? You know, 10,000 steps, right? So uh, I go for a walk, we have dinner, family time, and then in the afternoon, I have another block of classes, two, up to three, but rarely, rather two, even one uh, class. Thank you for this question. I had no idea you were interested in such things, in that kind of things. How about you? 
tell me what uh, maybe I, uh, I'm interested in this habit topic. What is your most important, to uh, most important habit when it comes to learning or whatever? What do you think is your most important habit and how did you develop this habit? All righty. Let's move on. Um, uh, question number three. Which accent do you find most beautiful? So the topic of accents is tricky because I teach and I really, I do believe that accent doesn't matter. Accent is our identity. It's our heritage. We should be proud of it. And it makes us all beautiful. This is what is beauty. The beauty of accent is that it, it differs so much from place to place, from from region to region, not only country to country, because you know that in the USA, this American accent has in fact so many accents inside. American accent, what do you mean? You mean New Yorker? You mean um, Californian? Um, which one? Southern? There are so many of them. The same with British accent. There are so many accents within this country. Um, but I understand the question and I'm going to tell you that it's Australian. I really enjoy listening to, for example, Emma from mm English. This is the name of her YouTube channel. Uh, so she has beautiful Australian accent. I love listening to this. And I'm an ignorant now probably because in Australia, you, I'm sure you have lots of different accents. I just don't know the names of them. Uh, but this melody sounds um, beautiful. But the what I enjoy the most about accents is that there are so many of them and we vary. We vary in this beautiful way, but still we can communicate thanks to proper pronunciation. You know that. Mm, this is very important. We need to learn this. You won't be understood if you don't know how to pronounce words, but it doesn't matter. Um, but it doesn't mean, sorry, it doesn't mean that you cannot keep your own accent, your own melody, your own way of creating sounds so i like listening to people from all over the world speaking english with their accents it's really it's very uh inspiring to for instance yeah i listened to so many podcasts and i come across some experts who uh, speak about i know science or um psychology Plus, uh, they are from India or they are from Italy, I don't know, um, Scandinavian countries. And they, and, they, and they speak fluently English and they have good pronunciation. I admire that and I am not bothered by their accent at all. I don't think it makes them, foreign accent makes them any less professional, uh, any less of experts than no, really, just no. So I like uh, other accents. All of them uh, sound beautifully, but yeah, I like this um, this Australian one. I also enjoy very much if I need to relax during my walks. I listen to Anna Yellen, Time Expert. Do you know her? I recommend it a few times because um, she talks about time. She talks about how to enjoy the moment, that this moment right here, right now, will never happen again. And that's what she is talking about. Yes, so this is beautiful. Plus her beautiful accent. I don't even know where she from. I think, I thought, I used to think that her accent comes from uh, Denmark or Sweden. I don't know, really. I'm not good at it, at recognizing accents. Now I think maybe Germany. But this is easy to recognize, right? Anna Yellen speaks beautiful English with this Ah, melody. I just enjoy listening to this. I'm freak. Uh, number three. That was number three. So let's move on to number four. Why did you choose English, not any other language? I tried, you know, I tried Italian. Um, but I wasn't motivated enough, I think. I, I don't know why I did it, really. Uh, I did study German in um, junior high school, you know, gymnasium. Uh, but it never clicked. And then um, I went to study uh, tourism and recreation and there we had Italian again, yes. And then one of my friends told me you should be a teacher because you, you, you have the, the skill and it's, it's just working well because I was teaching them <laughs> before exams. Um, so uh, 
this made me think I should do do it. Ah, I know, sorry, that was also my job. I was working as a receptionist at the uh, hostel uh, and there were receptionists, two receptionists to my fr friends. Uh, one of them was studying English and I felt, it's hard to explain because it's not logical. I felt uh, jealous. I envied her that she studies English and she was talking about this so much and she was so busy because it's a Gelonian University and she has so much to do. Look at these notes, grammar and everything. And I felt jealous. So this pang of jealousy, it made me think that maybe this is something that I want to be doing. Yeah, I was quite okay speaking, um, using English, reading English, understanding English. I thought... Um, I should do it. And the friend told me you should be a teacher. I liked English. I was uh, jealous about my friend. And the second receptionist, I was I was just mesmerized uh, with how she was speaking. With um, yeah, they were they were members of stack parties. This was annoying, very annoying, embarrassing, terrible. But she was dealing so well with them and she was talking with them beautifully. And I tried to observe this, learn it by heart and then copy. So I call it actorzenie. Um, so yeah, I was just performing as an actor on the scene. Hard to explain. But yeah, so I was inspired by um, people at my work and by my friend. Yeah, and I listened to this pang of jealousy. This made me um, search for university that I could study at. Uh, next question, question number five. The time, uh-oh, we're running out of time. Question number five. Can I complete a worksheet, sorry, my handwriting is just terrible. Can I complete a worksheet on the phone? Uh, yes, you can complete ah, standard worksheet you download from the page that correspond with particular episode. If you download just one uh, worksheet, uh, it's not editable. Uh, it's in PDF, you can open it on your phone, but you can't edit. Uh, whereas if you buy a worksheet set, Mm, you can edit on your phone. You just need to download this application, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. If you download Adobe Acrobat Reader, you can edit, you can complete the sentences on the phone. Everything is clickable. Um, you can go to a particular episode. You can go to, um, you can go outside with one click from the PDF to the episode and um, listen to those sentences you're translating. So it's fully editable, clickable, um, if you download Adobe Acrobat and buy worksheet set. Uh, singular worksheets are not editable. And question number five. Oh my gosh, that's such a long question. What uh, is the cause of a language blockade? What's the cause of a language blockade? There's whole podcast about this. It's teacher a podcast. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there is episode one, five causes of language blockade and how to eliminate them. So I recommend listening to this one. But yesterday I was talking with one student. Um, I always ask at the beginning when, we, when, when I start cooperation with new student, I ask, was there any particular event in your life? Did anything happen that caused this blockade? Do you know the reason for it? And very often, uh, students tell me stories about teachers who humiliated them, for instance, in front of the whole class. Or quite the opposite. Um, the teacher was avoiding me, I heard once, because the teacher knew I'm not um, fluent, and I'm not good at English, so she was never asking me questions. Ah, so the quite opposite, with the same result, blockade. Not funny at all. Um, so yes, there might be one particular cause uh, or not, or it's just a um, whole you know, mix of many small things that happen. Uh, 
uh, for instance, somebody, oh, this was also a story from my student. Uh, he told me that at work, for instance, one guy was laughing at him that he says delayed instead of delete. So he was pointing finger and laughing like a child, you know, in kindergarten. That's what he did. So this was this one small uh, thing and you just collect them in your life and they build up the blockade. Fear of speaking and fear of making mistakes. Think, fear of being laughed at. Yeah, many, many. But um, it doesn't have to be something particular, one event that you can point your finger at and say, this is the cause of my blockade. It makes things easier to work with that kind of situation with this person, but it doesn't have to be like that. <sighs> yes, so tune in, episode one, good one, five causes of language blockade and how to tackle them, how to, how to tackle them, I think, that was the title. Thank you for um, staying till now and I'll see you next week. Ah, I know. If you want to comment this video, please do. Um, maybe tell me about your um, tips and tricks, how you manage your habits. How Do you have some secret method? Do you have a keystone habit or just any way that helps you um, make the habit a habit? Yeah, so let me know. Or which accent do you prefer? Do you have your favorite accent? What is it? Let me know and I'll see you really soon uh, in a week. Bye bye.